Ladies and gentlemen, quackers and quackettes, welcome to the Quack and Smite League Deep Sea Division draft for season 12. I'm going to be your host, Raptor, and I'm alone today, which means that it's just you, me, and this delicious southern peach lemonade. Cheers to that. Anyway... Thank you so much for tuning in, and if you were here last night for the Abyss Draft, oh boy, what a time it was. You should definitely go back and check that out if you haven't. But tonight, we are moving on to the Deep Sea Division. I will be your host and cameraman, and let's get right in as the picks are already rolling in. First up on the board is the Kappa Corporation. Their Captain Caster takes t Kane Tempest. A name that I believe we saw in the Abyss Division, uh, now falling down to the Deep Sea Division and being number one overall. So, well done to him, and congrats to Caster for picking him up. Physics DC DZN, I'm sorry, were locked in is locked in uh, for the Pittsburgh Gold Diggers, who had the second pick. By the way, there was a bit of a switch up with the picks. Um, and who was picking where, if I'm not mistaken, it was the fourth pick slot, which we'll get to here momentarily, Gator Griff being picked up by the Food Fighters. Can you play in two di divisions, Doomed? Uh, no. No, you cannot, though that would be <laughs> very, that would be very interesting to see. Um, I wish I could play in two divisions. Let, let's be honest, we all do. Well, we finally caught up with the rest of the draft, moving on to the fourth pick, which was originally, I'm blanking, I don't I don't remember who this was, um, I want to say, oh, it was Eternal Vanguard who had this pick, now they traded all of their picks, oh, I'm sorry, it was the Pittsburgh, it was the Pittsburgh, uh, not Pittsburgh, it's not the Pittsburgh Knights, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry. It, it's been a crazy day. If you ha if you couldn't tell, it was actually the King's Court who uh, who had the fourth pick. They traded all of their picks. They traded their entire position with the Eternal Vanguard. Now the Eternal Vanguard are the fourth pick, and the King's Court they will trade cancel. I've been lied to. I've been lied to. Baited, a, yeah, I was absolutely baited, Adora. <laughs> absolutely a baited furballer going to the Eternal Vanguard. Oh, man. It's it, it's never a Raptor stream. You know it's a Raptor stream when something goes wrong. SM Specify, going to go to the crew coming up on the later half of the first round. And these are some names that we were expecting to see. And let's be honest. If I'm not going too deep into these picks right now, you should definitely tune in next Wednesday when me, Poe, and Bracking all come together for the QuackCast, where we will be breaking down these drafts and the Week 1 matchup. So, a little bit of a self-plug right there, if you do not mind me doing that. The Fallen Angels we get the sixth pick, and they will pick up Twinkle Toes 12, a name that I am not familiar with. Uh, but that just means all the more excitement. I cannot wait to see how Twinkle Toes uh, does this coming season on that team led by Reaper. The Kings Court in their actual position in the seventh slot, unless I'm getting baited again. Cooter, you better not be baiting me again. Pick up Joe from New York. I know that this is the Kings Court for picking up Joe from New York. That seems like a very Kings Court pick to make, let's be honest. Their Captain Cole to making that lock in. And then finally rounding out the first round and starting up the second round. Underclass Hero picks up Dr. Slime and Freak Itself for the Underworld uh, organization. And that rounds out the first round of picks. But because this is a snake draft, we are going right back to the King's Court. Looking to see who they are going to lock in. And let me tell you, there's going to be a lot more excitement here in Season 12. The casting, that, I'm going to say it, I'm not, I'm not being biased because obviously I am one of the higher-ups on the casting division for the QSL. But last season was definitely one of, if not the best casting 
season that we've had in the QSL. And this season is just going to be better. So you're going to want to be tuning in every weekend on twitch.tv slash Quack and Smite League to watch these matches come up. It's Reiku going to be picked up for the King's Court. And this King's Court draft is already looking very solid. I'm super excited to see what they have to do. Zexy Zealot going to be picked up for the Fallen Angels. This is going to be my wild card team, at least from what I'm seeing so far. I have not, I do not know these players very well. Um, but I do know Uchi, and the owner of the Fallen Angels, and I do know how much of a set, how much he sort of hangs back from when in these drafts how much he trusts his captains so if he trusts reaper to make the right picks and these are the picks that reaper is making i'm sure that this fallen angels team is going to be doing just fine round going back to the 12th pick in the draft just let me shine gonna be picked up on the crew indigo and specify get a very solid teammate right there moving right along to the eternal vanguard Next up on the clock at 13th pick. Remember, we this is a snake draft, which means that the teams on the end, the, the team who had first pick and the team that had eighth pick, will be, um, will have two picks back to back. We already saw the Underworld make their first back to back pick. We're going to be seeing the Kappa Corporation make their pick here soon, but we're just waiting on Adora to lock in their pick for the Eternal Vanguard in this 13th slot. How are you all doing t today, by the way? That just I just want to get to the chat a bit, you know, a bit uh lively lively here. How are you all doing? It's been a it's been a long day for me, let me tell you. It's been a long day. Rushed home from work to uh to make sure that I was ready for this, but you know, I love what I do here and I cannot I, I would not trade this position for the world, let me tell you. Jinx Q going to get picked up for the Eternal Vanguard. Meanwhile, the Food Fighters in that 14 slot pick up Tova Messer. That's going to mess me up on cast so much. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call him the, the, the Tova Master so much. Mark my words. It's just going to happen. <laughs> So, ahead of time, Tova Messer, I apologize, but I kind of blame you for making your name so close to Tova Master. Gold Diggers pick up the Honkler, a name that I recognized very fondly. I'm a former teammate of the Honkler, and I absolutely love the guy. Kappa Corporation going to pick up Pu El Elite Tortuga and Puppy with their picks. And that means that we are moving on to the third round. Here's the overall board so far. And you can already see Demon getting picked up there by the Pittsburgh Gold Diggers. Very solid draft so far. Not very many surprises. Let's be honest. Maybe maybe you could say that Demon uh, getting picked up is a bit of a surprise. Um, I'm not super familiar with it. With him myself, or with them myself, I'm sorry. So, maybe someone who, I'm, I'm going to stop while I'm ahead, because I don't know where I'm going, <laughs> where I'm going with that. Oh, man. Yes, F Physics, you were second overall. Congratulations, my man. I'll drink to that. And don't you worry, I am not Red Sniper. I know he's in the chat. That's why I'm calling him out. This is, this is Southern Peach Lemonade. Absolutely delicious. Drafts never go as expected. They do not, Red. They absolutely do not. Food Fighters on the board with their third round pick. Just waiting to see what Starry is a cutie has to lock in. He's going to lock in Helenu, a fellow caster. This is going to... He is absolutely a fantastic guy. I, I have casted with him multiple times. I love him. Never seen him play before, but I do know that he is a pretty decently high player. He's better. He's a higher level than me. So I'm excited to see him out, out there and Gato Griff, I, Grado Griff, I'm sorry. I know him as well. I think that those two are going to sync up extremely well. So this Food Fighters team, uh, they're already kind of taking my favor. I really like what Starry is a cutie has going on so far. 
Eternal Vanguard on the clock looking for pick number 20. I need red in the stream so I can send my... <laughs> you should have been here last night, uh, Louie, or Terminator, whatever you want to go by. You should have been here last night. He, Me and Red were having a blast of a night last night. Red might not see it a different way, but I was having fun last night for the Abyss Draft. Skizzy going to get picked up by the Eternal Vanguard for their third round pick. And that means that it will be the crew on the clock. Waiting to see what Indigo has to lock in for themselves. <laughs> I, It's always a great time with you on cast. It's always a great time with you, Red, as well. By, by the way, I know I made this joke last night. Your shirt looked mighty fine, my man. Mighty, mighty fine last night. Jake the carry, hoping to carry Indigo's team to a championship this season. And... So, I'm going to be honest with you. This, I'm going to have to do some research before the Quackcast on Wednesday. Because the Deep Sea is probably my weakest uh, area as far as prospect knowledge goes. I don't know a whole lot of these players all that well. Um, like, Abyss, I have been in the QSL for so long, and uh, the majority of the Abyss players are just, like, staples to the QSL. They've been around forever. So, I have casted them. I have I rec I have teamed with them, maybe gotten coaching from them at, some, at one point or another. So, I recognize them, and I can talk about them. The Deep Sea, there's quite a few wild cards in here. So, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't. I probably won't have a lot to say the later on in the draft we go. Um, for some of these players, because this is just like my weakest as far as how much I know about these players. Now, tomorrow with Shallows, I'll probably be able to talk all day about all these prospects. And then Puddles, where I where I would be playing, let's be honest. <laughs> In Puddles, I know basically everyone down there. So the next two days of the draft are going to be phenomenal. Be sure to tune in exact same time tomorrow at, well, I guess today we started late due to some technical difficulties. Uh, but be sure to, to tune in tomorrow at 8 and the same time on Thursday for the Shallows and Puddles draft. Ar Aridi, is that how you say your name? I, I deeply apologize if I, if I, if I misspoke. Um, if you were around last night, you also know I am not the best with the name. So, Aridi, if that's how you pronounce it, I definitely apologize. Scythro, that's one that I do know how to pronounce. Going to be picked up by Cole and the King's Court. Very solid draft coming out here for the King's Court so far in this draft, in this uh, deep sea division. And I am really looking forward to seeing how that uh, King's Court draft meshes because there are some very solid names there speaking of solid names boat and jexmas are going to be added to the underworld and that should round out their top their uh starters i mean uh because they do have five members underclass hero dr slime freak itself boat and jexmas some very solid names, some names I recognize, some names I don't. But hey, that just means all the more excitement for the season when it gets started. Seeing how these players are going to evolve and how these teams are going to mesh between players I know and players I don't. And that's one of the great parts about being a caster and being here the entire season. Back to... Oh, no one talk about that voice crack. Back to the King's Court. Boots and Cats. And Boots and Cats and Boots and Cats is going to get picked up by the King's Court to round out their starting five. And very solid starting five, I must say. Joe from New York, it's Reku and Scythro themselves. Very, very, very solid players. And this this King's Court team, they're going to be fun to watch. Let me tell you, if I know anything about watching these three players, especially throughout the seasons, this is going to be an interesting team to watch. So... We're going to have to wait and see. That's the whole point of the draft and why it's so hard to, you know, analyze draft picks as they're coming in is because we don't truly know what is really going to happen with these draft picks until the season truly starts. Bugle Whistle. 
No one's saying anything. Bugle Wizard going to get picked up by, by the Fallen Angels to round out their draft. To make it Reaper, Twinkle Toes 12, Zexy Zealot, Aridi, and Bugle Wizard going to be their top five. And more than likely, they're starters because that's how these drafts normally work out, at the very least for the beginning of the season. Another very interesting team to talk about. Like I said, this is going to be my wild card team just because I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know any of these players. <laughs> so this is the team I have the least to say about, but I'm not going to count them out just because I've seen teams worth seven brand new players to the QSL win the chip. So we are just going to have to wait and see Lilac going to be picked by the crew to round out their starting five. Moving on is going to be Slick for Eternal Vanguard. I apologize if I'm going through these next few a little bit quickly. I, we've kind of fallen behind because you know me, I ramble quite a bit. Sarzith, a familiar face in the QSL, going to get picked up here for the Food Fighters. And already, I already said that Helenu is is like... I, I, I want to cheer for the Food Fires because I love Helenu. Zarzith makes that even stronger. I absolutely love Zarzith. And it will be interesting to see how she performs this coming season. Ptolemy, another very recognizable name going to be picked up by the Pittsburgh Gold Diggers. And that means that we will be right back around. And here's the board as we wait for the Capital Corporation to make their next two picks. Remember, this is a snake draft, which means that they get the 32nd and 33rd. 32nd pick comes in, and it will be the Mexican Tangents. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I just love... I, I, what? Who just comes up with that name? Mexican Tangents. <laughs> that's, that's such a great name. I love it. I love it. Please never change it. But what? Why did you make your name that? Please, I want to know. <laughs> Yu Yu Yuri, <clears throat> or Yuru Yuri. I'm sorry. Who he picked up as well, presumably as the first sub. But you never really know. We have seen Mister Irrelevant, the very last pick of the draft be a week one starter in the past so you never really know how these drafts are going to play out we just all assume that the first four picks plus the captain will be the starters but you never know what these captains have cooking in the kitchen pittsburgh gold diggers are on the clock i wanted to make a pun so badly because i thought the food fires were going to be up but they're not there now they're up now the food fires are cooking in the kitchen as the Pittsburgh Gold Diggers pick, pick up Azure. I'm surprised to see Azure fall this low. Azure has... He he is a bit inconsistent at times, but he has run this division um, in the past. So I'm a bit surprised to see him fall so far. Food Fighters lock in their pick. It will be King Koopa. Oh, I'm sorry. Those those dots are very important. I get very upset when people don't, don't uh, specify the four in my name. King dot Koopa dot. Very important. Going to pick, be picked up in the, what is that, the fifth round? Yeah, the fifth round of the Deep Sea Draft by the Food Fighters. Congratulations for big game picked up there. That means that the Eternal Vanguard are on the clock. And this is another wild card fit team for me. I recognize Skizzy. Um, actually... Come to think of it, I recognize three of these players. So they're not exactly a wild card team, especially not on the level of the Fallen Angels. This is, this is going to be another interesting team to watch, the Eternal Vanguard. I'm not really sure how well this team is going to mesh. So it's going to be super interesting to see, once the season starts, how this team comes together, how this team really, really performs on the battleground of the gods. Because... I could completely see Skizzy just trying to run the map and his team play through him. I could see Adora doing the exact same thing. I could even see Jinx doing something similar. And adding another one to that, I could see I could see Rush Rushology trying to run the map and trying to get his team to play through him. So it's going to be extremely interesting how to see how this Eternal Vanguard team plays. And I think it's going to be even more interesting to see what this 
week one roster team is going to be for this Eternal Vanguards team. Because uh, at the moment, I could not take a guess what it would be. The crew on the board, they got Lilac. I, th- I don't know if I mentioned that in the, in our last pick. Uh, pass because I was going pretty quickly. Lilac got picked up in the fourth round, which means that we are moving on to the fifth, and they are officially on the clock. This is a pretty solid team. The the crew, the, yeah, Indigo, SM Specified, Just Let Me Shine, Jake the Carry, and Lilac. Quite a few names that have been in the QSL before, and quite a few names that I that I recognize either from here or from other leagues. This is going to be. It's hard to say because I say I think that all these teams are will be fun to watch in their own way, but this crew team especially I think is going to be fun to watch. A lot of playmakers on this team, and it's going to be interesting to see what what they can do once we actually get into the season. It's Sogno, or Sogno, Sogno, Sogno. Who kn- who knows? It's Sogno going to get picked up it by in the 37th slot by the crew, which means that we are moving on to the actual wild card team for me, which will be the Fallen Angels. Picked up Bugle Whistle. I did it again. I said Bugle Whistle. <laughs> Bugle Wizard. You would never guess that I that I cast regularly. You never would without messing up this name. Bugle Wizard <laughs> he got picked up at the 27th slot. We're now waiting for their 38th pick to get locked in. And as I said before, I think that this is probably the most interesting team to me just because I don't know, you know, who they are. I don't recognize what their uh I don't recognize any of these players. I'm going to be honest with you. So before the Quackcast on Wednesday, I'm going to have to do some research on this team and see how, how they're going to stack up because this team, going to be honest with you, I don't know anything about these players. But as I said before, we have seen these teams like this, teams where nobody really recognizes them or knows how they're going to uh, mesh, and we've seen them come together and win a chip. In the QSL before. So this team is certainly not a team to slack on. Taylor Tot. Taylor Tot the Tater Tot. I like that. <laughs> you're going to be pit- you're gonna be picked up in the 38th slot. And that means that we have two picks left of the seventh or fifth. Not seventh round. We're not there yet. Fifth round. And it's going to be Venom HQ, another name I recognize. A very, very solid mid laner there, picked up by the King's Court. Moving on to the Underworld, you got Sepper and Josh the Landlord. Welcome back, my friend. Josh the Landlord picked up for the Underworld. Very, very solid team here as we see the now the full draft of the Underworld. Very solid team. This is going. Uh, this is not quite the team to beat, in my opinion, but this is going to be a very fun team to fun team to watch for much the same reason as I said earlier. For who was it? I believe it was the crew that I said that for. They have a lot of playmakers on their team. They have a lot of players who can take a game into their own hand. So. This, this team is going to be fun to watch. It's going to be fun to see what they are cooking every single week. Moving back and waiting for the last pick of the draft for the King's Court organization. Let's see how they round it out. This team, is this team, as I said, is very, very solid. I just don't know how well they're going to mesh. Um, they might need a few weeks in order to get their feet under them, let's say. But I think that by the time we reach playoffs, by the time we reach the end of the season, this team could be the fifth seed or sixth seed going into playoffs. And they will be a team you need to watch out for. So however they round this draft out, I think that this Kings Court team is going to be absolutely stellar. They're going to be a team that you need to watch out for at all at all times, especially once we get to the later part of the season. And... Overall, I think that this is really just going to come down to how these players synergize. Because from the players I know on this team, 
they are very, very, very solid playmakers. They are very solid on their own. They can take a ga- game into their own hands and win it for their team. But at the same time, those kinds of players tend to have big personalities, which means that they don't mesh very well together. Um, and comms can get cluttered. Sometimes calls won't be followed. Th- th- it can just be turned into a mess at times uh, if that if you are not careful with those kinds of personalities. So I, tr- I trust the King Cooter, the owner of the organization. I trust Cole. They've got to keep this team under check because this is the type of team that can win a ring if they if their personalities are kept in on the down low and they can mesh together very well. So we are just going to have to wait and see how this Kings Court team they perform because at the moment I can't really make any predictions other than they're going to be late game late late season monsters if they can stick together. Still waiting for the Kings Court to make this 40, uh, 42nd pick. I, I apologize for the delay. It seems like there was a bit of confusion with the pick that got locked in. Seems like their pick is getting sent in now. So we're just going to have to wait and see. And it will be Pluto going to get picked in. I'm sorry. I got I got it. I got to get all of the, I got to emphasize it properly. Pluto gets locked in right there for the Kings Court, which rounds out their draft. That doesn't really change much of what I said uh, about them, but this is going to be a f- very fun team to watch. It's I think it's entirely on Cole and the King Cooter to make sure that this team actually gets through the season, because if they do un- unscathed, I think that this will be a very dangerous team. The Fallen Angels, they lock in Brownside, another very familiar name if you have been a part of the QSL for a long time. Brownside going to be rounding out the Fallen Angels. And finally, a player I know how to talk about. Unfortunately, based on his draft position, it seems like he'll be on the bench. So I'm going to save my discussion for what I think of this team later on when I know a bit more about them. But for right now... Brownside, fantastic pickup. they very excited to see what the Fallen Angels bring. Pressure, going to get po- locked in for the crew to round out their draft, which means that we only have a few picks left. Four, to be exact. The crew looking very strong. This is going to be a very fun team to watch. They're still, I said, We still haven't really reached my favorites. I, I think that the Kings Court, they could be my favorites. There's just that question of... You know, how are they going to mesh together? But I think if I was going to pick a favorite team, it's going to be the Eternal Vanguard. I love how this team has formed. And no matter what this last pick is, I think that Furballer is a very good playmaker. Skizzy is a very, very is a very, very good playmaker. I, I love how Adora plays the map. Jinxed is a phenomenal smite gamer. Like, really, really good smite gamer in the deep sea. I think that this... I think that this team... This team is my number one seed prediction going into playoffs. Like, very early, very early number one seed prediction. And I think that... I think that... I would not be surprised if we get to the to the end of the season and eternal vanguard was number 1 underworld was number 2 that those are my very early predictions now <laughs> now if you know me you also know that i tend to that that i tend to have something called the caster's curse i am the embodiment of the caster's curse so um adora i would like to pol- to apologize before the season even starts because i i shouldn't have said anything but po- you should be blaming poe she's the one that asked me to be on this cast food fighters looking for their final pick only 3 teams left Three teams left to pick up this uh, to pick up their last picks in the uh, draft. I'm sorry, I had a bit of a brain fart. Remember, remember when I said it was a long day? Yeah, <laughs> food fighters. I really like what they're cooking. Like I, I do. I'm gonna be honest with you. I do not think that this team 
will be um I do not think that this team will be a top two team um because I already gave my predictions I already said I think that the eternal vanguard and underworld are going to be in that one two slot and then the um king's courts I think could very easily slot in there as well but this would be my fourth my third or fourth seed and these are my like personal favorite. I really love how this team sort of shaped out, shaped out. I love the players on this said team, and I'm I'm not trying to pick favorites. I don't want to pick favorites. It's it's not good for a caster to have a favorite going into a match. But I just really like the players on this Food Fighter squad, and I'm and I really like how the entire team sort of formatted. And even if they don't, even if they don't win it all, even if they don't do extremely well in the season, I think that I'm gonna love watching this uh, team. I'm gonna think that this team is gonna be fun to watch every single week. Now they have locked in their last pick. I'm just waiting to see the uh, scream um, update before I spoil it for you. But I really like their last pick, and their last pick makes me want to cheer for this team even more. Let me. I'm gonna say that. There it is, M. Donlin, going to get picked up by the Food Fighters. And that will round out their draft. Doesn't really change anything I said about w this team. I think that I think that this is going to be a fun team to watch, and this is going to be my personal favorite team um, going into the season. The Pittsburgh Gold Diggers, with their last pick, and the second to last pick of the Deep Sea Draft, they will pick up Puko. I'm going to be honest with you, this is another one that I'm not very sure of, but I do know that the Pittsburgh Gold, Dem Pittsburgh Gold Demons, there had to be demon on, <laughs> on the screen when I said that. The Pittsburgh Gold Diggers. This is, I, I said it before, every single team is going to be fun to watch in their own way. This one has a lot of, this team has a lot of names from uh, QSL Ghosts of, pass what's what i'm blanking on the uh, christmas carol there's the ghost of future past the qsl ghost of future past you got the you got orphan you got the honkler you got ptolemy a few names that i haven't seen in uh the qsl for um at least a season or two so to see them back to see them on my screen right now very refreshing i'm excited to see what they can do in their first season back or in, their, in this season, back with the QSL. Yes, Brownside, you did get drafted, as I'm showing the board right now, because the Koopa Corporation has locked in their final pick. They're going to get Delizzard, 72. Brownside, you have been picked up by the Fallen Angels. Uh, so, congratulations on being picked up by what I would say is the wildcard team, because I don't know these players all that well. But here is the final board for the... Season 12, QSL Deep Sea Draft. Very solid teams. I've already given my opinion on them. You're going to hear more of my opinion on the Quackcast next Wednesday. So be on the lookout for that. But this is going to be a fun season, y'all. It's going to be an incredible season. I think that the Deep Sea Division has a lot of very good teams. A lot of teams that can really take any position, like, at all, I could see any of the. I could see an argument for any of these teams in the first slot. I could see an argument for any of these teams in the last slot. So, be sure to tune in throughout the entire season because we're going to be streaming. Every, we're going to be streaming games every single week in all four divisions. The deep sea division is, I believe, they're high gold to about mid plat, high plat. Um. This is our second highest division. The uh, highest is Masters and Grandmasters, the Abyss Draft, which happened yesterday. But once again, this is the entirety. This is the entire board of the Deep Sea Draft. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I've been Raptor. And thank shout out to all of the admins in the backgrounds doing the dirty work. I could not, could not have... Uh, could not have asked for a better team back there making this all go smoothly and 
Yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. This is going to be a fantastic season. Be sure to tune in tomorrow, exact same time, 8 o'clock, to watch the Shallows draft and then Puddles on Thursday at 8 o'clock as well. But I've been Raptor. This has been the QSL. You have all been you have all been the beautiful quackers and quackettes of the Quack and Smite League. Thank you all for tuning in, and we'll see you all next time.